Hello everyone, Eric Lima here. You're watching my secondary YouTube channel vlog in which my sentimental thoughts come from my heart and my soul. And my mental oddball shenanigans come from my mind and brain. This is EML 77 TV, episode 743, July the 13th, 2024, 37 p.m. What's going on, everybody? Um, it's funny. I had what, 69 subscribers to start off on the second cha dairy channel. Now I have 80 subscribers, which is weird. And um, I was checking in my subscribers list. Like some, of the majority, some of the 80 uh, subscribers have decided to keep their identities secret. That's okay. We'll welcome whoever, they, whoever you guys are. Welcome to the group. And if you troll channels, well, I blocked you, and uh, there's nothing you can do about it. So, anyway, so... <laughs> but, all kidding aside, welcome anyways. Um, Nick Severia brought up an interesting question. He called me on the phone last night because, um, you know, I've been dealing with this art baller troll. And, uh, apparently, in my words, I'm trying to reason with him and trying to help him get off this and, uh, of this insulting people and doing these distorted videos and crap and making mockeries of my real life situations and trying to use his channel, um, Try to come clean, use his channel for something good instead of um, stuff like that. But if he wants to keep his uh, little uh, baby temper tantrums going, hey, that's fine by me. You know, he, he doesn't want to listen to me. Well, guess what? I'm not going to listen to him. As I'm moving on from that, and let's do this thing. I was, and we'll, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this channel. He's got a problem with it. Guess what? You know, um, guess what? It's some, it's something that. Um, I don't care about anymore, so I shouldn't care about. I shouldn't worry about anymore. Anywho, so here's, you know, so here's the deal, and here is um, I um, the question was from Nick Silveria, excuse um. When you were a kid, was there anything you wanted to be when you grew up? When you grew up back then? Well, when I was a kid, I didn't think much, I didn't think much of life. I always worry about just having fun, playing with, you know, making friends, playing with my toys. This is like back in the day, mind you, when I was a little shrimp going up and growing up in New Bedford. And going to the Dartmouth Mall for the very first time when I was a kid and I would look at all the cool stores, I had a dream that I wanted to work at the Dartmouth Mall, at the North Dartmouth Mall, but back then, with all we had all I had all we had all, checked out all the cool stores back in the day, and that you know I wanted to be a cashier when I was a kid because I've always liked the uh, you know, the old school cashiers, you know, and they, things pop up. And it's like it's like almost like a toy, like a little um, jackpot video game, not a video game. It was a lot of time like a jackpot slot machine or something like that. I thought it was like. Watch too much of The Price is Right. I was watching too much game shows back in the day. I don't know. So, anyways, but my dream kind of technically came true when I started working at Ruby Tuesday back in 1995. And to this day, I've been working at, you know, working at the mall. Here's the only difference, though, between working at the mall to now and back, you know, wanting to work at the mall back then in the 80s. It's because the stores were different, obviously, back in the day. And, it, and these were, and these stores were totally different. You know, here's here's the thing. Here's the funny thing about life. You know, life does you know take interesting turns and twists this year, especially what, what's been going on this year. Obviously, I know a lot of people have been hating on 2020, and I don't blame it. Hey, listen, I'm 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 kind of like so so um, sore about 2020 as well. And, I mean, this past weekend was supposed to be the Wayland City Festival. But unfortunately, because of COVID-19 and the pandemic, that has been postponed. But I want to check the uh, Facebook post and of the, uh, you know, you know, um, just... And it, 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 you know, life does take us into into many different uh, directions. 
And um, you know, and um, yeah, it's um, checking out. Uh, checking out. It is so. It would have been open opening day for 2020. 50th anniversary park looks so empty and it, it's a sad sad day sad weekend actually and it you know it broke my heart you know <clears throat> and I mean it was something that um you know I never expected you know um I have been, you know, I had many, many uh, things that I wanted to happen. According to, yeah, according to, um, according, this is back in uh, May of 13th, uh, a couple months ago. Um, um, Wellesley Festival has been postponed until after Labor Day. So, and in fact, Van John Mitchell announced all events in the city with more than 10 people in attendance that need a city permit would be canceled through Labor, Labor Day to protect public health COVID, uh, through the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, Mike Sylvia said it best. The whole event in the fall, we're trying to do the right thing for the community. Uh, would have been set for July 9th to the 12th at Butler Park, um, which is past, this past weekend. And he's playing to stay in touch to keep an eye on the state, local COVID-19 restrictions, be on the day. He said the situation should come into better focus in four to six weeks. If it is safe, we really want home spent as part of the city's identity. So yet, so it would have been 50, 50 years. And, uh... You know, many other major feasts, festivals, parades, and fairs across the South Coast region have scrapped their summer plans during the plans. You see, here's here's the thing. Here here's where, you know, we all have. You know, we all thought that this year, 2020, was going to be a great year. I mean, but then when the pandemic kicked in and all that, you know chaos had happened, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of people were saying that um, this whole thing was a scam, it was all thing made by p- politicians, because it's election year, and I think it's all the whole thing is to blame, blame the president for something, because um, everybody hated, most of the country hated um, President Trump, unfortunately, and um, it's just, you know, when you have somebody inexperienced and a billionaire and doesn't know how to run the country, yeah, you know, a lot of hate can and can come towards you. Plus, you got an e- you know, the guy's got an ego and everything else. I mean, I can understand. I can understand why people don't like him, but there has to be a reason why. There has to be a reason why. Instead of hating on the guy, you know, search, you know, search your hearts, guys. Search. You know, all I can say is search for an answer why Donald Trump's our president. I, you know, listen, I was kind of shocked that he was our president. I didn't expect that to happen. Probably the most hated president since Nixon, you know. So it is crazy the way things, you know, the way things are. But then, you know, politicians try to control everything. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you know they've taken away everything. You know, they've taken away our feasts, our festivals, our summer, you know, our summer plans, and, you know, and, yeah, I'm I'm not very happy, I'm very angry about the whole thing, you know, and then protests and riots started happening, and then the, the numbers kick up again, and it's like, you know, people are not thinking, and that's what, you know what it is, you know, you know, personally, the reason why dreams never come to reality, because we're... We're not focusing on, you know, we're worried about everything else in life. 
and you know, and everybody else is trying to, you know, everybody else is trying to, uh, well, let's say, control us, so to speak. You know, um, we want to do, so, you know, like I said, most of us want to do something, have fun. Oh no, you can't do that. Oh no, you can't say that, and everything else. Our dreams, you no, know, most of our dreams are happening. Yeah, life happens, but at the same time, we let it. You know, we let everyone else discourage us from fulfilling our dreams. That's been the issue. You know, when I decided to do this YouTube thing, you know, I thought it would be pretty cool. But then we got, when I get internet troll after internet troll coming after me, they're trying, these internet trolls, their goal is trying to discourage you from your dreams. They're trying to control your life. And I'm not allowing these internet trolls to control them. And that's the reason why I block them. People say, oh, they say, oh, you're blocking me because you're a coward. No. I'm blocking these trolls because I am not going to let them control my life. I'm not going to let them speak death of my life. I'm not going to allow that. I'm not going to put up with it. Yes, there were dreams that I had that were broken. I broke down and cried. And you know and you know what? Regardless of what this art baller jabroni had to say, I mean, if you check out his videos in the descriptions, disgusting. But let me tell you something. Yes, I did. One of my dreams was to find a girl as pretty as Paulette. Thought I, I had that dream fulfilled, but then that dream got smashed. It was not her fault. It was my fault. I think a lot of these dreams that I had that were gone by the wayside, I blame myself for them. You see, there's a lot of things about me that you, got, you guys don't know. And one of those things is that I'm not perfect. In fact, I have to admit something. And I never thought I would say this, but I'm a failure as a Christian. I'm a failure as a person. Failure as a friend. I'm a failure as a son. I'm a failure as a brother. I'm a failure as a cousin. I'm a failure as an uncle. And a failure as a grandson. In fact, I'm a failure as a relative. And the reason why I say that is I'm not, you know, I want to humble myself. I, you know, I felt like I put, and then y'all think I'm putting myself down, but I'm not really, you know. It's like, I, because I have not. I felt like I have not done the job that I'm supposed to be not doing the job that I'm supposed to be as, as a Christian. I have not done the job that I'm supposed to be as a big brother. Cause I, have, I felt like what happened to my sister Cora, I blame myself for it because I have not been the best big brother to her when I was little, when I was younger. When my dad and my, and my stepmother got married in 1988, you know, one thing I have failed to do is try to be the, the big brother I can be to, to Cora. I felt like I failed in that department. Cause I've, I felt like I've not set the example that I'm supposed to set. And I blame myself for that. I felt like I disgraced myself. Because all I cared about was me. I was selfish. And believe me, I deserve my dreams to get smashed, to get dashed. I don't deserve anything in life. That's true. I felt like I failed as a person, as a Christian, as a as a son, as a uncle, as a re as a relative. I feel like I need to I need to do better. Failure is not the end, though. That means there's a lot more I need to learn. And believe me, there's a lot more of myself that I need to learn and straighten out before anything. My childhood was a failure. And I felt like I needed to play catch-up. 
or make up for lost time, so to speak. I can normally blame everybody else from my parents to my siblings and to my relatives, my friends. But there's only one person I need to blame. This guy. So, never had necessarily any big dreams. I always wanted to be a sportscaster too. Because I talk about sports all the time and wrestling. Being a failure to me does not mean the end of my life. It does not mean the end of the world for me. It does not mean the end of things. It's just learning. A a progress, a process that I'm going through. Sometimes you get to pick yourself up and dust yourself off and try again. I'm not asking anybody to feel sorry for me and say, oh, everything's going to be okay and don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. But I, but I did a lot of thinking when after Nick asked me that question. You know? And uh, I'm also a failure as a friend. You know... Because I've always, you know, especially when it comes to girls, when it comes when it comes to women, I got to be a friend first. I have, I've acted like I have not done that. I've always tried to respect my elders and respect people. I think I failed in that department too, because a lot of people out there trying to disrespect me, trying to talk down to me, and I'm trying to do my best to be respectful towards others sometimes you're getting sometimes there's a lot of people that step all over me you, you're sick and tired of getting stomped on you know people want to walk all over you and take advantage of you and that's probably the reason why I have been been a total jerk to a lot of people sometimes to a lot of people out there because I felt like I'm getting sick and tired of being stomped on, and I felt like if I get stomped on and you know, walked on, and people, let, if I let people walk all over me, I feel like I'm a failure. Have I allowed that to happen? You know, I'm trying to make a vow to never let it happen to me again. You know, people question my life and question me and ask me stuff that sometimes it made me angry. You know? And with everything that went on this year, sometimes I had to sit I just and just sit back and just and just try to, you know, make odds and ends of th- of things, you know. You know, yeah, a lot of things have happened to me in my life, and, you know, I get made fun of. People accuse me of other things. They make fun of my appearance. All I, all I know is it's a shame that nobody can understand me. Nobody can understand where I'm coming from. And the crazy thing is that everybody thinks, everybody else thinks it's funny. Me being, being made fun of, think, they think that's funny. I'm here to tell you guys that I'm not laughing. And it's not funny. There are people out there just like me, they feel like they're failures. They're going through a lot of stuff right now. And for people out there that make a mockery of my life, I mean, that's not funny. People want to turn their backs to me because I think differently than they do. 
That's the way it is. Now I want to address a situation that happened a couple of years ago on the Discord app during Rodney T. Flippin's YouTube Games and Entertainment channel. A young man from Louisiana, young teenager, um, he was caught cheating on on a, on a question while Rodney was hosting Tic Tac Doe. Everybody else, including my friend Kevin Henry, called him out on it. And this young man, this young kid, just, just um, denies it. And originally, Rodney had him kicked out of the group. But it seems like somebody, possibly this young man's mother, I don't know if she made a threat to him or what and anything else. Rodney brought him back in the group and Kevin Henry and him had a falling out. Now, I've been reading on Discord what was going on. So I made a vow not to take, uh, choose any sides. And Kevin Henry was really upset with me about that. Well, I'm here to say, I'm going to here to give, I give my reasons why I'm not choosing any sides. When somebody has, when two people have a beef against each other, it's between them. I don't get involved in people's beefs. I don't care if it's my sister's having a beef. Yeah. I don't get in the middle of that. Okay? Do I like to see things work out? Sure. And the reason why I don't want to get involved in anybody's beef because last time I got something involved with someone's beef by accident, I ended up getting getting trolled on. For it, and I am not going to allow that to happen to me again. I'm not going to stand for the trolling and the bullying anymore. I'm trying to reason with this art baller guy, and all he keeps doing is, oh, yeah, 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 you know, being a disgusting individual once again. He won't listen to me. Guess what? I'm not going to help him anymore until he learns. AK, uh, Art Bowler, a.k.a. Chris Kennedy, until he learns to respect me and respect others, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give him the satisfaction of trying to get to me. Oh yeah, Nick wants me to, oh, to thank him for all the subscribers and all that. Now, most of the subscribers, you know, I would love to. But the fact of the matter is, is this. This is all he's doing is making a mockery of me. He thinks this is funny. He thinks, thinks, thinks this is comedy. Life is not comedy. Real life situations are not comical situations. You know, life is too sh- short and precious to, you know... Yes, we can laugh and have a good time and all, but using real life situations that hurt people emotionally and then twist it around and pervert it is not funny. It's not a funny thing. We have to be considerate. We have to be respectful. And you know what? They want people want to make a mockery of it via video. I don't see why. I don't see that should not be acceptable. So, so why am I talking like this? Life happens. Dreams do get shattered. But it's up to you how you will handle it. I've humbly I've humbly came before you. Come before you as a man. A sinner, a Christian, a son, a brother, an uncle, a cousin, a grandson, a nephew. A friend. To tell all of you that I, Eric Lima. I, Eric Matthew Lima. Am not perfect. 
I'm a failure. I failed as a friend. I failed as a son. I failed as a grandson. I failed as a brother. I failed as an uncle. I failed as a cousin. I failed as a nephew. I failed as a Christian. It. Yes, I have become angry of the ways that I've been. I'm not proud of it. I've allowed my emotions and my flesh to get a hold of me. And I'm going to make sure I stand on my two feet. I felt like I felt like I disrespected a lot of people in my life over the years. I have offended a lot of people in my life over these years. I made a lot of people angry. I'm I've hurt a lot of people's feelings. And for that I apologize. I was being, t- and most importantly, I was being selfish. I felt like I have not been the person that I was supposed to be. Personally, I'm getting sick. And, um, there, there's times I get sick and tired of being the person what people want me to be. And I'm sitting here trying to get my, you know, get everything in order, try to get my mind right, and all these things keep keep happening. And I'm trying to keep a cool head. But I'm trying to do my best not to get super angry to the point where I fly off the handle and swear my head off. Because the Bible says be slow to anger, and that's what I'm trying to do, you know. Life is precious, folks. Life is precious. Yesterday, um, Hollywood mm. uh, the um, uh. Um, we, what I meant to say was, we, um, Hollywood lost a legendary actress, Kelly Preston. Lost her battle with breast cancer at the age of 57 yesterday. Condolences go to her husband, John Travolta, and their three children. You know, John Travolta had a rough life, too. Despite having a great Hollywood career, he lost his son, Jet. Now he lost his wife. And... That's why life is so short for me. It, it, like to me, life is so short to the point where 
I need to open up a little bit more. A lot of people um, I have been I've always liked to be hunky dory and having a lot of fun and oh let's go crazy and play some video games, game show flash games, give me a top ten list, do a wrestling commentary. But sometimes you you have to, you know, sit back, scale back a little bit and just, you know, be real with people and that's what I do. You know, I'm sorry if I came off as being negative on myself. I'm not. I'm just trying to be an honest person. I'm trying to be a stand up person. I'm trying to, you know, just a humbling person. You know, one thing I need to learn is humility. And I'm trying to humble myself and say, hey, I make mistakes. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I fail sometimes. And come to find out that a body was found at the um, lake where Naya Rivera was swimming. Naya Rivera was not only an actress, but also a singer. Uh, she started in the um, hit TV show Glee back in the day. That body could be of Naya Rivera. If that's the case, rest in peace. You see, you know, Hollywood's going through crap too. We're all going through stuff, guys. It's how we handle life. How we handle these things. That what makes us as good characters. Yes, I failed at everything. I felt like I failed at life. Here I am working a minimum wage job. You know, picking up trash at, at a local mall. While everybody else has gotten, you know... You know... Gone on, got got married, got kids, their houses, and all that. And I felt like in the back of my brain that I failed as a person in life. And I failed in life. I'm a failure in life. Was does this mean to shun everything, turn my back on everything that's good, turn my back on my friends and my family, and try to make it on my own? Go look at me. I'm going to be the man. No. That means there's a lot more I need to learn. A lot more that I need to accomplish in life. I can get back on my feet again. You know? Being a failure is not the end of life. It's just the beginning of of being humble. Of being hu- Humility. I'll be okay. Just let you guys know, I'll be alright. I'm going to be strong in God. I'm going to let the Lord work with me. And work within me. To be a better person. I do apologize if I'm... You felt like I'm tearing myself down. But uh, no, I'm not. I'm trying, to hum- I'm trying to humble myself. And that's what I need to do. Being humble is very important. Make myself humble. I don't need the Iron Sheik to hit me with a camel clutch to do that. To break my back and make me humble. All I need is a wake up call. And I felt like I finally got it. There's a lot more things I need to do. A lot more issues I need to work out. I will be fine. It's not, it's not, it's not the end of EML 77 TV. In fact, from this point forward, I'm going to get stronger. If I have to speak what's from my heart, I'm going to do so. I always say, sentimental things come from my heart and my soul. And this is one of these sentimental things. Nick, your question helped... Uh, Nick Severia, your question helped me to turn this thing into a special message for people. If you feel like you're a failure in your life, don't give up. Assess your situation. Close your eyes. Pray about it. Ask God what He can do to help you. To me... I, I mean, I ask the Lord to work with my... work in 
work on my sister Cora and deal with my sister Cora, but sometimes I ask the Lord, but first deal with me. Work within me. Sometimes I need to do that. I mean, that's the main reason why Paulette and I have not spoken to to each other in 25 years. Because I need to work within me. If you, you know, I'd be more than happy to ask people like Paulette to forgive me. I'm, you know, I'll be the first one. If I'm the, listen, if people told, came up to me, Sarah, you did me wrong, man. Whatever it is, if I offended anybody out there, friends, family, whatever. I'd like to ask you to forgive me if I hurt you in any way. I ask you to forgive me. I never meant to hurt anybody. I don't like hurting people. That's not my thing. Yeah, sometimes I get angry about my life. Sometimes I get angry about things, but but sometimes also it takes something that struck a chord with you. And humble you right there. I'm not going to give up though. Just because I say I'm a failure. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm giving up. That I quit. It does not mean that at all. It means it's a learning pro- process. A learning progress. Sometimes. In order to get to heaven. You have to go through hell. Sometimes when you think about situations like what's been going on, you need to humble yourself. You need to realize what you're doing, what you're saying. I just praise God that I have a God that has has always helped me with wisdom. Wisdom. I praise God for a family that loves me and cares about me. Wants to make sure I'm okay. I praise God for a church family that... That knows me and knows my heart. And know that they're very proud of me. I praise God for a game show fan, fandom family. Like Rodney Flippin, Kevin Henry, Brendan Scruggs. That they want to make sure that I'm okay and I'll be fine. I thank God for a Ruby Tuesday Dartmouth family, alumni family, that basically liked me for me. I just praise God. Despite me saying that I'm a failure, I just praise God that He's got my back and He can make me a better person. Sometimes success... It's not measured by how much money you make or how many buildings you have or what you've done in Hollywood or or in sports or anything like that. It's what you do in here. And how... and, And the gifts that you've been given. And how you share them. How much an impact in someone's life you have made. To me, that's the ultimate success. Success does not mean a big old house with cars, Rolls Royces, planes, boats, trains, and automobiles. Success should not be measured by the amount of things that you have. I mean, look, I got DVDs of cold school cartoons, my favorite shows. I got video games up the wazoo. I got systems, consoles, t-shirts, and you know... That doesn't measure success for me. For me, what measures success is what you do with your life and how you and and the gifts that God has given you, what you do with them, or the or the gift that you have since you were a child. I mean, if you don't believe in God, what gifts do you have that you want to give out? You know. There's people that I know that don't believe in God. Some chose to be atheists. I'm not going to condemn them. I'm not going... But the lifestyle... The lifestyle, I don't live that lifestyle, you know? I don't live the gay lifestyle. I don't live the... Um, 
atheist lifestyle. I tried to live the God lifestyle, the Jesus lifestyle, and I know a lot of people think that I'm weird. Listen, if they all think I'm crazy, listen, I was born in this world crazy, folks. I was born not normal. Trust me on that one, folks. Trust me on that one. A lot of y'all look at me like, who is this weirdo? <laughs> I'm about as crazy as a whammy on press your luck, baby. <laughs> but the bottom line is, folks, I may be proud of who I am, but I'm also willing, you know, I am a human being, and I do make mistakes. I'm just blessed that there's people that I'm surrounded by good people. People that care about me. I'm surrounded by, by awesome people that God has sent in my life and they have gifts that God has given them to help me be a better person. I feel like I feel pretty good. I do apologize if, if you guys feel like I'm tearing myself down and I wanted everybody to feel sorry for me. That's not my goal. My goal was to be honest and be humble. Like a lot of us need that out there, to be honest and be humble. A lot of us need to humble ourselves. You know, it reminds me of a song that when the first time I met Mayor John K. Bullard, I was part of the Academy of Firstborn Choir which um, we sang Heal Our Land and according to the Bible it says my people would humble themselves and pray I will heal them and heal their land I'm humble, I've humbled myself before you guys I'll let God deal with me the way He knows how to deal with me. I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful that I'm alive. And I'm just thankful that I have a, a roof up un, over my head. I'm thankful I have a job, a car. I'm just thankful for just being here on earth. There'll be a day that I won't be here. when that day comes I would like for you all to remember me for who I am as a person to all of you but but for right now I'm going to do my thing here on YouTube continue doing my thing here I figured I want to get it you know after that question that Nick asked me it kind of inspired me to uh, talk a little bit more because we're trained from being humble so God's like the spiritual iron sheik. He broke my back and made me humble. <laughs> Being humble is very important. So I'll let you guys know that. I'll see you in the next episode, 744. Be blessed, guys, and uh, have a wonderful day. Peace.